Dear Colibri students, welcome to the Advanced in Broadband Technologies module. Here we are going to go ahead with the Advanced module, first part, which is on fiber to the home, or more generally, fiber to the X, market and economics. What are we going to talk about? I will present you a brief introduction, a little bit on the market and economics of this new technology, and then in the next field we will comment about the technologies. First of all, talking about what's the a scenario where this fiber to the home is working. As you can see in this slide, uh, networks are very complex and uh, converging on different domains. Usually, we're usually talking about, uh, on the one hand, backbone networks, usually very long distances with very high rate, uh, data rates, even up to terabits per second nowadays, and reaching distances which are covering continent to continent and also uh, the whole continent itself. In the middle we have a smaller network which is the metro core, which is usually city to city uh, networks with distances about 100 kilometers and more moderate bit rates. And finally, what it is closer to the user, which is the metro and access networks, usually within the cities, with much shorter distances in the range of 10 kilometers or about 20 kilometers and covering data rates which previously was very small ones but nowadays approaching 30 megabits, 100 megabits and nowadays even 1 gigabit per second. So in this scenario what we are going to talk is about how the user can get access to this uh, network through the residential either for example uh, previous technologies like DSL or nowadays cable and fiber to the home. Uh, why it's so important this area in uh, advanced networks? The main reason is that, uh, as you may know, uh, traffic in internet is growing its year significantly and uh, users are demanding more and more bandwidth. Uh, it's true that you are uh, demanding this bandwidth, depends on which is your uses. If you are uses uh, your computer, uh, not only just for email, but also for uh, downloading uh, big files or sharing mm, your uh, videos and photos and all this stuff, you are probably going in this direction. Till a few years, the main problem was the, what it is said, the last mile bottleneck. That means that the core network was providing a huge bandwidth, but this bandwidth was not approaching, not arriving to the users. This is because then fiber to the home has been coming into how to provide this huge bandwidth to the end users. Uh, we're going to be talking about fiber to the X instead of fiber to the home because operators and companies working in this field has been uh, looking how we could be approaching closer and closer to the user because at the end it is a loan, it's a big investment and they were interested in doing this investment as they are having more customers and then they are getting customers uh, really wanted to have more and more bandwidth. Because of this, fiber to the X is covering either just having the uh, fiber till just the local exchange, which is close to a set of uh, buildings, or to the cabinet, that could be a small installation in the, in the street, or to the carp, or even if you are paying for it and then you are really happy we need to have the uh, bit bandwidth, then fiber to the home, then uh, getting the final equipment in your own uh, home. How was this evolving? Uh, let's say in this uh, report from the Fiber to the Home Council, we will see several documents from this uh, council which is monitoring the market and economics and the trends in this, in this kind of technology. We see that in uh, 2009, it was mainly Asia who was uh, going ahead in this market, mainly South Korea and Hong Kong uh, being the first in the list on developing these kind of technologies, closely followed by Japan. What they were uh, installing, we will talk about this a little bit later on, there was in this moment two main standards, which is Ethernet Passive Optical Network, which was mainly developed, uh, deployed in Asia, and Gigabit Capable Pond, which is uh, solely Japan, mainly deployed in Europe and, and America. For example, uh, we will see that nowadays 
this value was uh, moving from about 50% of the population to nowadays nearly 100% of the population, for example, in Singapore. How this has been evolving in the other rest of the world? Uh, as we can see here, uh, still Asia is dominating in the development of this kind of uh, technology. So we are having about nearly 80 million users for this fiber to the home. Uh, US is also following uh, uh, later on with 100, uh, sorry, with 11 million users. And Europe is also approaching together with uh, Russia and other European countries with about 10 million users for, for this. Is this the end of the history? No, it is not. Uh, mainly because the reason for using fiber to the home, this kind of optical technology, is not just about the speed. At this slide, it's just simply saying. It is also because, uh, apart from being the fastest possible speed, that's, that's right, uh, it is also the most appropriate technology for having a video intensive internet uh, services, together with providing a very reduced latency, what is uh, the meaning uh, for, uh, for this kind of applications, that you are not using buffers, so you're not having no delays, no interruptions. So this is the best solution for real-time services. Uh, even more important, it is a much more resilient technology than, uh, than other ones. So failures are relatively rare in this technology. Uh, due to this, uh, some uh, companies have been already predicting, and um, most of them has been, um, uh, has been already uh, done in previous years, as here has been reported by the president of the Fiber to the Home Council, that, for example, by 2025, it is expected that 80% of the German homes will be having, uh, will be needing about 60 megabits per second for the upstream, and will need uh, half of them about 170 megabits per second for the upstream. Due to this, uh, there are a lot of companies that they are working on the deployment of these kind of technologies, and as you will see, the main uh, reason for this is that uh, they are seeing clearly that the population um, will be willing to use these kind of services, uh, especially if it is uh, combined with value-added services uh, taking advantage of this uh, enormous bandwidth, and also uh, it is the experience from mobile that, of course, when mobile was starting, uh, there were some doubts if you were going to be uh, more comfortable living with a mobile, but nowadays, for example, that everyone nearly has a mobile, it cannot be uh, possible for anyone to imagine how it could be now living without the mobile that you have been accustomed to be using it. So they're expecting that they, with the, this kind of broadband technologies is going to be pretty much the same. Somehow, the summary is that exactly like with ray wells and smartphones, let's say knowing these kind of services and using it is what will make the demand. Uh, so what's, what's the kind of uh, things that is expected for the next years? On the one hand, uh, Europe is increasing a lot the number of subscribers. Now this is about 40% of subscribers in the uh, European Union of the 39, especially Russia, uh, Ukraine, Turkey are increasing uh, significantly. And at the Europe of the 27 countries, let's say it is France, Spain, and Portugal, the ones which are nowadays having more than about 36% of users. And Scandinavian uh, countries and Netherlands also very close uh, to these values. Uh, finally, if we look into the whole uh, scenario, we can compare how it is now the fixed broadband internet access compared with the mobile broadband internet access. As you can see, of course, for many countries, uh, mobile is a very uh, necessity that no one can be living with, a, with, with it is. In fact, for example, you have some countries that they have even more than 100% of subscriptions. That means that there are many people that is having even two mobiles or two lines of mobile instead of one. Of course, for the fixed broadband, you are going not to reach over 100%, but as you can see, there are many countries that they are already reaching this 100% of subscription for, for broadband. But still, there are many places that will go later on achieving this uh, fixed broadband internet, and here is where the market uh, can be growing. As a, just as a summary of all this that we have been talking, let's say the plan 
for the uh, European Union countries is that, uh, for example, by the 2020, many countries in Europe are planned that the users should have 100 megabits per second for all the users, for example, in Austria, in Denmark, in Estonia, Finland, France, Luxembourg, uh, Sweden. And for uh, other countries, for example, a minimum of 30 megabits per second is expected to be assured for all the users in Czech Republic, for example, and in Spain. So that meaning that, yes, this is a technology that it is becoming an as a success, and it will be also a success in the next year at new services will be using of this enormous broadband, and also at it will be checked that it is the technology that provides a better communication without delays and without uh, risk of failures. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next bill.